Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Rusty, Jersey Red, as always. What's up? Vincent, good evening. Russ, what's up? I got your question about the interval training quiz on guitar tricks, and I am not sure what happened to that. Um, so I'm going to have to get back to you on that. Um, I'm going to have to check with uh, Christopher Schlegel as to where, if it got moved, uh, I know that he had some stuff within that uh, course. We're talking about the ear training course that uh, Christopher Schlegel has some interval training courses, uh, lessons, tutorials on guitar tricks. And he was talking about an inter interval training quiz that should have been in the toolbox. Doesn't seem to be there anymore. So I'm unaware of what might have <clears throat> excuse me, happened with that. But I will get back to you on it, Russ, okay? So if you join join in next week, I will have an answer for you. I'm going to hit him up. Welcome, everybody. I appreciate you coming in. Uh, disclaimer off the top, I've got kind of a weak voice. Uh, just some uh, throat issues. Uh, COVID negative, luckily, but uh, still caught something. So uh, voice is going to be a little hoarse tonight. But I think I can get push on through, all right? So apologize for that. Peter, what's up? Steve in New Hampshire, what's what's going on? Good evening. Peter, good day. Welcome, GK from the Garden State. All right, rocking it on Friday. Danny, what's up? Andrew, hello. Jim Gregory, as always. Good to see you. Uh, MA, what's up? Great to see you. Um, as always, I've got the tabs that we're going to go through tonight. Tonight we're on the electric, uh, but... Any of these exercises can be played on the acoustic as well. Uh, doing a little bit of rhythm styles, just a few little genres, some musical examples to kind of uh, hopefully inspire you this week to uh, dig in, experiment with a little bit. It's always the uh, hope with what we go through, but I've got those tabs down in a PDF and a guitar profile. Um, expand the description below the video. Now, if you downloaded and print this, printed this out, <laughs> uh, uh, earlier than 15 minutes before this session started, uh, it'll be out of date because I'm in a last minute change. So there's a version two of the documents that I put up 15 minutes ago with new links on that page. So hopefully you should have that. Um, let me know that if you're downloading this, it's version two. Uh, I'm hoping I did it right. <laughs> I think I saved it. But we'll see. All right. Uh, what's up, Dennis? What's going on, Alex? Trevor from Australia. Good day. Arlen from Chicago. Welcome, welcome. Steve, what's going on? <laughs> All right. MA got version two. All right. So it's up there. Excellent. So uh, it was just a minor change in the first exercise. That I, something that I kind of glossed over. That uh, you know, I'm always making mistakes on these things. So uh, <laughs> hopefully. We can get it all sorted out. What's up, Jeffrey? Peace and guitar. I love it. Peace, love, and guitar. That's a good one. All right, so rhythm styles. And uh, we'll just go through some different guitar examples here. Uh, Chris, what's going on? <laughs> all right. Chris in Calgary, my hometown. Excellent, my friend. With, with a uh, Friday night beverage. I love it. Adult beverage. Uh, from Palmetto, Florida, Vincent. Excellent. And Alfonso from Brazil, welcome. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Love it. All right, so uh, exercise one, uh, for those of you just joining, we've got a PDF with the tabs. Just expand the description below the video. You have access to it. There's a link there. Uh, first exercise, I just start nice and, nice and easy with just some strums and uh, a few things to think about with these strums, okay? So... Uh, we're starting with a G chord, uh, third fret of the low string, second fret of the A, open D, open G, open B string, third fret of the high string, right, your Mel Bay sort of G chord. <laughs> right on. A plus one for Paralyzer. Glad you enjoy it. Excellent. That was a real fun one to do. Uh, those of you who don't know, that's a Finger 11 song that just went up on Guitar Tricks. And uh, it's a fun one. So cool. Thanks for that. 
Um, if you look at the rhythm for the strums here, we've got uh, there's two ways to look at the rhythm because I've I've also transcribed out whether you should do a downstroke or an up upstroke. And so those downstrokes are sort of the staple looking symbol. Uh, and then the upstroke is going to be the the pointed V. Okay. Um, so we've got down, down, up, down, up, down, up is sort of our strum for the first part of this and for the second bar as well, which is a repeated um, strum pattern on a different chord progression. Very simple chord progression starting on the G chord, G major, and then moving to a C major chord, and just the regular Mel Bay C, third fret of the A, second fret of the D, open G string, first fret of the B, open high E string. Now notice we've got this tricky little tab thing that happens. What's up, Donna? Welcome. Theodore, good to see you. Uh, we've got this tricky little tab thing happening where, uh, you know, hopefully don't be too alarmed by this, but uh, the third strum, which is an upstroke, and then the last strum of that first bar are just open strings, okay? And sometimes that's denoted because it is sort of a strumming style. And, you know, I chose folk because it happens a lot in folk, but it happens in pop and rock and lots of other genres uh, where the chord is getting changed on a strum. So this actually buys you some time to get your fingers to the next chord, right? Because if I'm on a G chord and I'm going to go down, down, up to the next C chord where I'm going to have to come down, right? Rad Flying V, what's up? Glad you made it. you can see that I'm going slow enough that I can make that change really quick. Down, down, up, C. Okay? Um, but it's actually a stylistic thing where you kind of pull off the chord on that upstroke and come down on the downstroke on the next chord. So let me play through the first bar a couple times and you'll kind of get the feel for it. it sounds like this. Sort of reminds me a little bit about, you know, Bob Dylan, uh, you know, like a Rolling Stone kind of strum. Uh, but there are plenty of songs where uh, in that chord change, they just lift completely off the strings. And it, and it kind of goes by fast enough that you don't even really notice that it's just a bunch of open strings ringing, right? Because by the time you think of that, that you're on to the next chord. So it sounds pretty musical. Like if I play this a lot faster... Right? That's a lot different than playing. Of course, as guitar players, we want to be able to make those chord changes as quickly as you can and cleanly as you can. So that's always something to aspire to. But this sort of approach gives you a little bit of an escape hatch to, to be a little more relaxed about it because plenty of songs feature this kind of thing. And it actually still sounds pretty good, right? Like the difference between to this. Right? It's not all that far off. It's a real subtle difference. You know, a lot of people wouldn't even really notice there was a difference there. But the big difference for the player is that you've got some extra time to be able to make those moves. Okay? Um... Another thing to think about, um, which I, I know I've talked about before, Erica, what's up? Hey, hey, back at you. Thanks for joining. Um, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, another thing to think about is, <coughs> excuse me, the fingers you're using, particularly with the C chord and the G chord going back and forth. Okay. Um. If you were to use, like, you see, you use your index middle ring right here for the C chord. But going to the G chord, if you were to use your middle and ring to just move down that same shape down a string set and then put your pinky at the third fret of the high string, that's a lot easier of a move once you train it 
Okay, I'm not saying it's easy off the top because usually that pinky is a, is a little bit squirrely to try and get in there, right? But if you can make it happen, <coughs> excuse me, if you can make it happen, that's a really great time saver to be able to get between those two chords, okay? All right, but I'm just saying that as an alternative. Okay, it's something you could work on that's uh, really useful. But if you just do it the normal, you know, sort of the regular way we would do a G chord is, you know, middle finger on the low string, index on the A string, and maybe either the pinky or the ring finger up top. But that's a lot of fingers to kind of move back and forth. You see that, right? Between G and C, like this. Okay. What's up, Nikki the dog? <laughs> I'm glad you made it, my friend. All right. Still a good thing to work on because we really, you know, even, you know, challenging the dexterity of fingers like that is always a good thing. We want to kind of uh, really work on sort of our weaknesses on the guitar to, to you know, try and make it as strong as we can, right? Um, so I'm just offering an alternative there with the G chord, with the pinky and the other fingers, okay? Rui, what's up? Good evening. Back at you. All right. So, uh... Kind of a cool vibe for a strum. I know it's pretty straightforward, but there's some good stuff in here, all right? So. All right, in the second bar, we've got uh, a, the same strum, but different chords, okay? We're going from E to A. So I kind of was envisioning a little bit of an exercise where you were, you're gonna kind of go through these two chord progressions on a loop for a minute or two. You could use it to warm up. You could use it to work on your, you know, strengthen your chord changes, strengthen your timing, all that kind of stuff, right? You can do this at any tempo and, uh, you know, just work on it with a click or a drum groove. Make sure that you're in the groove, right? In Locked in with rhythm. So once again, you can see, you know, two strums on the E and then lifting off the chord, getting ready to go to the A chord. I've got an upstroke in between. Right? And then it's down, up, down. And then that other upstroke, I'm getting ready to go back to the E chord. All right, so you can practice this. A couple bars each, right? Like repeat each bar and then just go back and forth. So... Uh, Make sense? Something nice and straightforward to start off with. I, I think that's still worth, well worth kind of running over. Don is asking, do I know any Christian songs? Uh, not really off the top of my head, um, but I don't know whether or not you still have the Guitar Tricks uh, membership, but the song that went up this week is in fact a contemporary Christian song that I taught. Um, it's, called, it's a song called I Will Follow Christ is actually a, a great tune for chords because you're on an acoustic and you're playing tons of bar chords and open chords and there's lots of modulations and lots of really cool chord progressions that are a little bit sort of adventurous uh, so if you still have your membership check it out um, even if you're not into ccm there's always something to learn with these songs right so uh check it out cool cool kenneth what's going on welcome welcome yeah, there you go, Rui. Uh, is thinking of should I stay or, or should I go, right? Yeah, it's got that kind of vibe for sure, right? You can kind of just tweak the, the strum a little bit to put that in there. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Exercise one down. Are you with me? Oh, I'm your Venus. There you go. Uh, what's the name of that? Is that the song, Venus? She's got it. Yeah, yeah, baby, she's got it. I'm your Venus. I'm your fire. Yeah. Same thing, yeah. Cruising to the mountaintop. I like it. Exercise two, let's get on to some ar arpeggiation. as sort of a pop rock thing. Once again, uh, those of you joining late, apologize for the hoarse throat here tonight. I'm going to do the best I can to get through it. 
Um, coming into uh, an interesting G shape that I find really useful, fifth fret of the D string, open G string, so you're doubling up on that same G note, and then barring down on the third fret of the top two strings. And there's no major third in that. That's just all roots and fifths, or roots and one fifth. Uh, but I really like that shape. It's pretty cool. And I came up with a different kind of arpeggiated pattern for that. So it goes like this, D string, G string, B string, come back to the G string and go G string, B string, high string, and then coming down D string, G string. So. I don't think we've quite covered uh, an arpeggiation pattern quite like that, uh, but I quite like it. It's cool. Um, this is one of the exercises where I didn't really put a suggested picking pattern on it. This is one that, you know, you can kind of pick this whole bunch of different ways. So just sort of go with what feels the most natural to you for, because you're kind of going up, coming back, going up, coming back. Um, you could do alternate picking, right? <laughs> Right, practice your alternate picking like that. That's a challenging thing. You can right go down to and then an upstroke and then a down, down, up again, and up at the end, right? Kind of like that. Whatever feels the most natural for you, okay? Um, also to note in that first bar going into this G chord, I'm sliding in to that fifth fret. So not from any particular fret below it just you want to kind of okay i'm going to move that shape down two frets exact same shape now i'm on an f note third fret of the d i've still got the open g string open and i'm barring down on the first fret now of the top two strings love this chord this is an f sus two uh you know if you had the major third in there it would be the second fret of the g but if you release that, it opens up the chord a little bit. And you've got that G note added to the F chord. And that becomes a suspended chord, suspended two or a sus two. Right? Then if I just bring down to the second fret of the D string, still I've got the open G string, still I've got the first fret of the B, but now I'm going to kind of curl my finger up so that I've got the open E string up top. That gives me a C chord. Specifically, it's a C chord without the C in the bass, right? So it would be the E in the bass, the next note. So you see it on the tab, C slash E, which just means chord and then slash root, okay? And then the final one is an open G chord. Now, uh, as always, I recommend that you fret the whole G chord here even though we're not hitting some of the fretted notes that you would normally do on a G chord, okay? I mean, you could just grab the low third fret and pick the rest are open strings, right? You could do that, but if you happen to mess up on one of the strings, you might hit a note that you don't want to hit. It's not in the chord, which is why it's always a great backup to be able to just grab the whole chord. That way, if I happen to hit the A string by mistake or the high string by mistake, I've still got a note in the chord, so no one would even really bat an eye. They wouldn't even notice, right, that you might have hit the wrong thing. All right, the first three bars are exactly the same strings, but the last chord actually shifts the arpeggiation to the D, G, and B string, okay? We've sort of got the, we've got the root on the D string and then the arpeggiation on the top three strings. That changes with the last G chord. So if I try to play this all the way through, sounds like this. One more time. Okay. Pretty cool. So a little bit tricky in that last bar because you're going to be picking on different strings, right? So... I like it a lot. Uh, to get it under your fingers, go slow. 
like with everything that you kind of, uh, you know, doesn't immediately come to you, um, you, all you need to do is just slow this down and go real slow. So even if you're just and just doing that over and over, eventually that will program into your muscles and your fingers and your wrist. And you'll start to be able to speed it up a lot easier. Okay. Just make sure you're doing it correctly. So in order to really make sure you're doing it correctly, slow it way down. Right. You know, I'm like a broken record with that, but, uh, never hurts to uh, keep coming back to it. All right. Jim Gregory's like, I wrote a song years ago using those shapes, not knowing what they were. love that sound. There you go. It's great. This is the beauty of the guitar, right? Is you experiment, you find stuff that sounds cool and it doesn't even really matter whether you know what it is or not. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> I like to teach the stuff of figuring out. And, and I was like that, like the first 20 years I played the guitar. I didn't really know what I was doing other than just a few basics. I went to music college and learned all the stuff. And what I found is that learning the theory behind it is worthwhile because it gives you shortcuts. You can figure out stuff a lot quicker rather than fishing around a lot. If you kind of understand what's happening, you can make better choices to kind of figure out stuff versus just fishing around, which is what we, you know, kind of all do in the beginning, right? Just fishing around, trying to find something that sounds okay. All right. Uh, MA's got a good one, uh, Collective Soul. That's right. Yeah, I was sort of thinking of that song. It's a little bit different, but uh, I think there's a... And then this... Yeah, it uses that arpeggiation pattern uh, over a G chord, but just using some different roots. Good call there, MA. I like it. Rui says, many, many classics were written that way, but agree with that. Knowing the tools refines the craft. Absolutely. A thousand percent, right? <laughs> uh, we're asking what school I went to. Uh, it was uh, GIT in Los Angeles. I went there for a year and kind of learned all this stuff, right? It was amazing. It was an amazing year. Put it that way. Enjoyed my time there. I recommend it to anybody, actually. You, you know, it was funny, you know, as growing up, when I first started playing guitar, you would hear about it. You know, this takes me back to the 80s when I started learning to play guitar as a teenager. And you'd hear about that place and I always dreamed of doing it. I never actually like ever believed that I would ever go there. But you know, as circumstances turned out, I was able to go there in my 30s. So, uh, yeah, I didn't regret it for a sec. All right. Uh, Mr. California. Oh, what's the best way to learn chord progressions? Learn songs. Um. That's the best way to learn chord progressions because uh, you're just going to be exposed to them if you just dig in and start learning songs. Okay, so if you have a Guitar Tricks membership, we have beginner songs, uh, songs made easy where, you know, we'll take a song down to its basic open or bar chords with a really strum. And that's where you can learn, you know, the sound of chord progressions. Because in pop music, especially popular music, doesn't matter what genre, but if it's popular, um, the same chord progressions tend to be used over and over and over and over again. So if you're exposed to lots of songs and you kind of know what's going on with the chords, you start to learn what's going on with the chords. You can pick it out a lot easier and you start to realize that there's, you know, just standard chord progressions out there. So uh, that's my number one answer. Learn, learn songs. Learn songs. You will learn chord progressions if you learn songs. Okay. Hopefully that helps. Uh, Robin says, Diary by Bread uses that. There you go. Cool. I like that. Don is asking, I've got to learn how to use scales and when to use them as a mixture. I make out of the scales over the chord. It could be three different chords using the same scale. Yes. Um, and make your own stuff up. Well, you know, you can do that. Like th there's no rule saying that, uh, you know, we need to know exactly what scale to solo over a chord progression. 
Like you can just pick some notes and, and figure it out by your ears, right? Um, but this comes back to what I was saying where um, it takes a lot longer for you to develop those skills to be able to hear where to go on the guitar and kind of figure it out yourself versus learning just some theory stuff, some scales, <coughs> you know, get some of that theory stuff under your fingers. And it's, a, it's like a short circuit into opening all that stuff a lot quicker. Okay. So uh, yeah, but there's no rules that, you know, somebody hands you a chord progression and says solo over it that you need to use a certain scale. You can, what we have at our, at our disposal are 12 notes. I mean, you just make a musical choice as to what you want to hear over that chord progression, right? So uh, there's no right or wrong way, really. Um, you know, theory-wise, there, there are some things that, uh, you know, some certain sounds that are tied to certain scales, and those are just flavors, right? So there you go. There's a, <laughs> I'm not going to get into a big rant over it. But there you go. And I like Arlen. If I win the mega millions, I'm going to go to music school. <laughs> I hear you, man. Billion dollars would pay for it. No problem, right? <laughs> there you go. Rad Flying V. A friend, of my, a friend of his went to GIT in the mid 80s, came back a shredder. Love it. Yeah, that was definitely the thing back then. Excellent. Uh, Steve's asking, maybe I missed something. What would be your starting point to learn theory? We'll just start with... Uh, Learning chords, okay? Um, learning the fretboard of where the notes are on the fretboard a little bit, and then start with the major scale, okay? In, in my opinion, um, you know, we have tons of scales, right? But if you really learn the major scale and the natural minor scale and then the pentatonic scales, which could be major and minor, that's going to make up a bulk of anything that you do. And all the other scales on top of that are just little tweaks, of these first four scales, okay? So if you sort of understand how scales are, are how, how they come to be, like there's a whole bunch of, you know, sort of backstory behind, you know, the relationship between intervals and notes and scales and the chords and a key and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, you know, the starting point is to probably do what you're doing. You're learning it all the time and just don't realize it. Yeah, just keep trying to, understand what it is you're doing. Anybody can open a book and play a tab, but take it a little bit further and, and go, okay, this is an A. Oh, this is a G up here. Oh, but we're up back and we're doing that. And if you just do those little pieces along the way, it all starts to connect and it all starts to reinforce each other. Okay. I love it. Nikki, the dog lived on the strip in the eighties. <laughs> Not always comfortably would, would do it again. Wow. That's cool, man. I love it. Definitely. <laughs> There you go. Rui says, if you love punk, the one, four, and five is all you need. And, you know, a lot of people say with guitar, you just need three chords and the truth. Really, that's it. And you can write a song. You can do whatever, right? There you go. How, how deep do you want to go with it? Right? That's all anything you can answer yourself. So, blues rock riff, exercise three. Uh, lifted this from a John Mayer trio song. Uh, pretty cool bluesy rock kind of thing. We've got some slides, some double stops, some muted strums. So there's a lot going on in this one. So let's play it slowly and see if we can get through it here. Um... Okay. Maybe I should go to that one. Might... Oh, no, that's probably the right one. Cool. So pretty cool little bluesy sort of riff, right? Um, 16th note strums, okay? So, you know, it's sort of your clue up top is that you've got some notes with the double flags. That tells you 16th notes. So we're thinking 1E e and 2E and 3, 4. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And if you have to slow this down, slow it down, right? Down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Go like that. I'm um, playing off the open A, and then a little chromatic slide. Really cool sound here. Fourth fret of the D and fifth fret of the G going one fret up to five and six on the D and G. What you're doing is sliding 
into a double stop out of an A7 chord. Okay, if you look at the A7 bar chord fifth position and just look at the D and G string, that's what you've got right there. That sort of uh, tritone double stop. That's kind of that bluesy sound right there, especially if you do that little slide from a semitone below or fret below. Okay. After that, we've got a down up muted. So you want to drape your fingers over the strings, but not pressing down, but just kind of holding them or just resting on them. And you've got the down up, right? Getting the mute. So then I've got a hammer on here. Five to seven on the D string. Going from a G to, a, to an A. So uh, following that up with a couple mutes. So just take it little chunks at a time to learn this kind of stuff, right? So we're going to end up on a uh, C note, third fret of the A string. Grab the fifth fret of the D string and then back quickly to the third fret. A little bit of a bluesy bend to kind of go through the riff again, right? Second bar is a little bit different. Okay, second time we don't do the... Uh, second time is just three to five. And then you repeat it all, right? So the goal is to try to get that under the fingers nice and slow, making sure that you've got all the downs and ups in the right spots. And if you work it with lots of repetition, then maybe we can get it up to the speed of what how he plays this song. Now, let's see. Cool? Inspiring, hopefully? A little bit? <laughs> I hope so. Cool. Guys, the uh, I know maybe that was a little more advanced than usual, but uh, you know the, the idea here is to um, give you something to kind of mess around with. You don't have to work on this in the coming week exactly as I presented it. You can take a little chunk out of it and just like, wow, I just like that little slide, that sound, right? Right. Sounds a little Joe Walsh, right, Jody One? Yeah. That same idea, right? Always on the run, right? Exactly. Can't play that one very well, but hey, tried it. <laughs> the idea is that you've got little elements that you can kind of work on, throw it, experiment, change the chords, change the key, throw them into different spots in the neck, see what you can kind of come up with with that idea, even if it's just a little tiny piece of what I presented, okay? Exercise four, a little bit more of a country kind of thing. Uh, let me play through it, and then uh, we'll talk about it a bit. Uh, this is exercise four on the PDF. Once again, if you just joined... Span the description. You've got a PDF with uh, the tabs that we're going through tonight. All right. So uh, let's see. Okay. Kind of a country-ish thing, right? So uh, once again, you know, Previous example playing off that open A, okay? And uh, playing off that and just kind of doing more of a country-ish thing with some uh, double stops, simple ones, just one finger ones, right? Like you're playing off the second fret of the D and G, but then also the open G and D strings. Just slide here with your pinky from five to four, but you can bar down on the D and G. There you go, Robin, Kentucky Headhunters, that kind of thing. James, what's up? Excellent. Okay. Um, 
And then what else? A little bit of a lick at the end. Okay, this is a classic out of the, uh, you know, for A, playing off the A chord. And if you want to play like a major pentatonic kind of country-ish thing, that pentatonic box is right there off the A chord. Okay. And so we've got this. That kind of sound, right? Where you're your pinky on the fifth fret of the B string. And if you bend up a full step, adding uh, the G string at the fourth fret. Classic sound right there, right? You've got the fourth fret up and down and then the second fret. And really what you're outlining is the root and fifth and also bending up to the third, right? So really cool idea here. Another thing to, to maybe do is use hybrid picking and pluck the D and G string, right? To make it maybe a little more, uh, ch you know, country-ish chicken pick, <coughs> excuse me, sounding. Okay. There you go. Maybe try to do something like that, right? We've got the pick, but we're just plucking with the uh with the fingers up top that gives it a totally different texture okay what's up mark no problem thanks for joining james i was practicing my guitar and i stopped because i can't play the chords and I have small hands and fingers well james we just got to keep keep uh um you know going with what you can do and keep working on it and just loosen up those fingers as much as possible okay because there's Guitar players with small hands and fingers. I'm not going to say it's easier, like it's definitely not as easy for them, but it's about programming those fingers and the hands and the muscles. And you sh you you can do it, okay? Even people with small hands can still play guitar, okay? They just have to keep at it, right? If it's something where if it's down the neck a little bit and it's just too hard for you to finger everything, move it up the neck, okay? Because the frets are a little bit closer up here. So at least train your fingers up the neck on the same kind of thing that you'd be trying to do down here and just keep working on it. And if you keep repetition, 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 start sliding it down the neck a little bit and just stretching it out a little bit. You know, as you go down, you'll stretch your fingers a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. I guarantee you, you know, if you're in a couple of weeks or, you know, as long as you're working on that, it's going to get easier and easier and years easier to bring it down the neck. Okay. C minor, B minor, F minor is kind of hard. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So that's a great example, right? F chord. Don't work on it down here by the nut. Take it up to the eighth fret and try to make it happen up here where the frets are a little bit closer together. And once you get used to that, start moving it down and like just spreading your fingers out gradually and programming. It, okay. Same thing with the C minor, right? If you got it here, move it up to the 10th fret and do that. Just a little idea, okay? All right. Uh, what we got? Eric has got the Taylor Mini. All right, excellent. Uh, yeah, shorter scale length helps with small fingers. And yeah, you can get three-quarter uh, size guitars. They're out there, okay? Okay. <laughs> And of course, Rusty's still torturing his wife with his play. <laughs> there you go. I love it. Keep doing it. Exercise five, a blues riff. Uh, I know we kind of already touched on the blues a little bit. Uh, all right, another plus one for a short scale guitar. So there you go. There are some options as well. Okay. Um, I picked a blues in G and a, a, a sort of a, a, a riff and a lick put together that you can kind of move around the neck a little bit and apply it to a one, four, five blues okay so we start off in the key of g playing a power chord third fret of the low string fifth fret of the d and then this little okay so now again those of you with the small fingers I'm playing in G, so it's a little bit intense, right? So then in order to learn this riff, go down to where I put it in the key of D, okay? Up the neck, 10th and 12th fret of the low string, and then go up to the 14th fret. A 
learn it there. Okay. That's where you're going to program it. And then just keep bringing it down gradually. Let's talk about the riff itself. I'm playing a power chord, cutting it off, and then using these uh, sixth intervals to come down chromatically. Okay. In groups of three, those are triplets. Okay. So triple it, triple it, triple it. And that's the other thing. I'll get to that in a sec. But Okay, so uh, always do this, okay? Relate where the shape is to where the power chord is so that you can find it easy. It doesn't matter what key you're in, right? You can go to this sort of lick. A lot of times it ends off like that where you're on the upper part of a G bar chord, right? But I'm just jumping into the power chord. Okay. So G string, high E string, and you're picking between them, sliding into that first note. Okay. Power chord. Third fret of the low string, fifth fret of the A, and I'm adding another two frets onto the A string. A string onto the chord. This is the classic bo blues boogie shuffle rhythm. Okay. A little bit of a stretcher. Okay. So if you can't get this right now, move it up the neck. Other important thing is that it's a shuffle. Okay. And that tells you that where it says number five blues riff on the handout, um, it's telling you that it's a swung eighth feel or a shuffle okay which means the ands in between the one two three four which in straight time go one and two and three and four and they're equal now we're pushing those ands we're delaying them we're, we're putting them closer to the next downbeat so it's one and two and three and four and that's what gives that swagger that bounce that shuffle right That's what we're doing with this. Okay. So how about I play this in a 12 bar blues? Uh, this is the way I would do it. And by the way, in the middle, I, I didn't show it, but if you did it, did the D chord two, two frets down, that's a C chord. That's the four chord in the key of G. And you just shift. Everything is all on the same strings, all the same picking, all the same strumming. You're just shifting the location of it, okay? So if I was to play this in a 12-bar blues, it would sound like this. like that okay <laughs> that's what i would do with this approach so play around with it okay 12 bar blues and f sharp just move it down one fret right okay excellent exercise six we're getting through it you hanging in everybody with me All right. <clears throat> cool, cool. All right. So uh, I haven't really touched on uh, this sort of funk R&B sort of bubble line. I don't know if you've heard of this term. It's sort of a muted kind of like single note kind of rhythm. Um, so I'm going to play through this example, example six. We'll talk a little bit about it. Uh, it kind of sounds like this. Let's see. Uh. Okay. 
Okay? That's the idea. That we're, we're key of A. So I've got some muting going on here. And as you can see, I've transcribed a lot of rests in between. Uh, you can kind of superimpose on top of those rests if you wanted to. You could do music strums, too. Uh. Okay. Um, let's see it first. We're playing off this A note, seventh fret of the D string. Okay. Classic major pentatonic move right here is the seventh fret to the ninth fret of the A string. Okay. That's a really common sort of way to highlight up into that A note. Uh, using the major pentatonic scale. So I'm hammering on 7 to 9 on the A string. And then I'm going to just do a muted downstroke, coming back with an upstroke on the 7th fret of the D. And then cutting it off with a rest in between. So. Then I'm going to do the ninth fret of the A and then back to the seventh fret of the D string with two down strokes, but with rests in between. Okay. Um, second half just sort of expands upon that. Okay. So, <coughs> excuse me. Sliding in on the G string 11 to 9, sliding into the D string 11 to 9, okay? So there you go. Uh, just a cool little R&B, funky kind of thing that you lay into a song. It's percussive. It's groovy. This is a really common thing in th those kind of genres, all right? Richard's asking, why do I have a right-handed guitar with a backwards neck? Because I love the look. That's why. I know it's not for everybody, but it's for me. <laughs> I love the way it looks. This is a Fender Strat body with a uh, replace the neck with a Warmoth neck. Okay. And I got the big, the old Fender CBS headstock, which is a lot bigger. I like a, a lot of wood. I think I just, for me, I think it looks awesome. So uh, I got a roasted maple neck and it's got a compound radius and stainless steel fret. So it has a lot of modern features to the neck that make it just awesome to play, okay? Um, so I upgraded it. So I slapped it on this Fender body and it's one of my favorite guitars, right? Fender Strat with sort of just an upgraded neck. And I love it. And I, I've got a bunch of guitars with the uh, reverse headstock. I, I can't get enough of it actually. I totally love it. <laughs> Can you do that R&B lick again? I wanna get it. Yes, I will do it uh, a little bit slowly. Here we go. Let me see if I can speed it up. So give me some. Okay, that's what we're going for there. Uh, of course, these sessions live on YouTube, so uh, you can check it out. Sounds like a commercial, maybe. Geico? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? I like it. Okay. Smooth jazz, right? Could be smooth jazz or something like that. <laughs> it's that 80s thing. There you go. I'm an 80s guy, right? <laughs> yeah. And definitely Rad Flying V. Throw some wah on that lick and there you go. Sultry. Love it. <laughs> right on, guys. All right. Uh, coming in with, with a little bit of reggae, exercise seven. I'm uh, going to play some cool chords first with a little bit of syncopated strums and then sort of turn that into uh, – it's actually lifted from a Bob Marley song. I believe the song is called Jammin'. We, we'd be jamming. Hope we'll hope we be jamming with you that if you're familiar with that song. Uh, I actually sort of played the keyboard riff the first time through, and then the second time in set, Exercise 7B, we did a much more of a kind of typical – uh, guitar reggae approach. 
Um, but there's nothing wrong with learning sort of the main riff of this song. It, it's good chords, good strumming. I think it goes something like this. Um, uh, let's see. Um, I'm just playing around with it a little bit. But uh, that first chord, B minor seven, okay? Seventh fret of the low string, curling your finger to mute the A string, and then use another finger to bar down seventh fret of the D, G, and B, okay? There's your B minor seven, okay? Going to an E seven, okay? And uh, barring down from the seventh fret all the way up, adding the ninth fret of the D and B string. Gives you an uh, E dominant seventh. We're going to slide that up three frets and get a G major. So that's 10th fret of the A, 12th fret of the D, G, and B. And then the F sharp minor seven is one fret down, still barring the ninth fret of the A string all the way up, grabbing 11 on the D, 10 on the B. Okay, so the strums. So we've got, again, we've got that triplet feel, right? One, and two, and three, and four, and... And then a rest. So it's down, 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 up. And then when you go to the E chord, there's a rest off the top of that bar, and then up, down, up, down, up. Okay, up to the G chord. The uh, strum is the same as the first bar, right? Pretty cool. Put it together. Uh, Jeff, this is a Bob Marley tune called Jammin'. All right, this is actually sort of the keyboard part in this song. But in exercise 7B, I'm going to play high triads on the top three strings. And I'm going to infer these chords. I'm not going to play the full chords because I'm only picking three notes. We've got seventh chords here. We've got a B minor 7, an E7, and an F sharp minor 7. Those notes, those chords have four notes in them. But I, I'm sort of outlining those chords with a triad with three of the notes from the chord okay so if you check it out uh exercise 7b one two three four That's it, Jeff. Yeah, absolutely. That's the idea. It's really useful to know those sort of higher triads on the guitar because you could slot yourself in. If there's a keyboard and a bass player, they're usually doing stuff holding down a lot of musical real estate. And you can just poke through with these cool little economical chords in a higher register, right? Particularly with the reggae approach, because what we're doing is we're muted on the first quarter note and then just a quick strum and then a staccato strum actually on the second and fourth, okay? So we're not letting those chords ring out. They're like chord stabs, they're staccato, like, right? So let's do that. Okay? Uh, but it's that feel, that, that's like a typical reggae kind of thing right is just to uh have that on the two and four with the guitar playing something high up there outlining the chord progression so just wanted to show you if uh if no one if somebody was you know handed you a reggae song and it just had sort of something like what's on the top or it just showed you chords how as a guitar player would you play it you would play something like in 7b you would go ahead and just do that one two three four those kind of always kind of really effective and you know really work well on the guitar got it right let's see is there any chord key built around the five and six strings as a reference root point good question russ 
uh, you kind of need to know this a little bit. Like, you know, like uh, it's a B minor seven chord. And we're just using the top part of the B minor seven chord. We're just using uh, the seventh fret of the D, G, and B string, which actually just is a B minor, right? Same thing with the E7, right? You look at the full E7 chord and then just taking the top three from it. The G is a full G major triad right there in the, the D shape. And then I went down and chose this one, which looks like an A major triad, but it's actually an F sharp minor seven triad because the root would be on the fourth fret of the D string. Okay. Chord fragments, is that a correct term? Yeah, like we're just, we're sort of outlining the chords with smaller fragments. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the cool thing about triads and just using certain notes uh, out of the full chord is that you can put them in different combinations so that you get that descending kind of sound if that's what you want. But you could kind of reverse it and do an ascending one too. It's just the nature of where those notes are available to you on the frets. You can experiment with this all day long, right? If I'm going to, oh, by the way, I put the wrong chord name on the second bar of 7B. I apologize. That's an E minor 7. Uh, sorry, E7, E dominant 7. Right? So if I went, uh, and then E, what is that? An E, E dominant 7. Uh, we could do this. You could go up here up to G and then F minor seven up here. So then maybe you could do the, the B minor up here, B minor seven. Right? So <laughs> lots of combinations of different fragments uh, and you could kind of shape how, you know, whether you want it to go up, whether you want it to go down, whether you want it to stay, stay in the same position. I tried to, keep that kind of in the same position, but you get notes that are chromatic. You get notes that are coming downwards, right? You've got this, uh, what was it? Yeah. Nine, uh, seven, nine, eight, five, like that kind of thing. Like it's, you know, you get these different melodies going on. So it's pretty cool. Yes. There you go. Triads. All right. As always, we ended off with a little bit of a jazz progression, playing some more challenging chords. Um, so I'm just going to play through it. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, Russ, uh, check out. Uh, Christopher Schlegel's got a whole thing on triads on his page, but the quickest way to get to it on guitar tricks is to go to the magnifying glass, the search function, put in triads, a bunch of stuff comes up and look for the Schlegel stuff on triad shapes. And he's got a whole set of lessons on that. Okay. All right, uh, C major seven, this is exercise eight, a little bit of a jazzy thing. Thanks, Jeff, appreciate that. Reverse headstock, I love it too. Uh, we've got this strum pattern where we're gonna hit the root note and then do a, a strum that's cut off again. Let's see. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Our first uh, repellent, comment to the jazz. Hey man, there's great chords in here. This is great stuff to, to play and, uh, and practice fingering this kind of stuff, right? Uh, up here. Let's see if I can get it a little more. There you go. What do you got there? Major seven, minor sevens, and dominant sevenths. Those jazzy chords, okay? Uh, really cool. Uh, it just extended chords give you a, a lot more flavor, a lot more richness. They're fun to play. So uh, experiment with it if you dare, all right? Uh, but pretty straight ahead idea here. And you can also do the... Uh, Uh, let's see. You can do a uh, hybrid picking where you kind of pluck. G 
Jeff, I'm not as prepared as I should be here because uh, there's a key change in this. So what would it be? One, six, but then it changes keys, right? So one, six, uh, and then probably changes to D minor, right? So uh, that would be one, five. So one, six, one, five. And then we've got, now we go to E minor seven. So that's another shift where it's going to be one, five. And then back to one, five in D minor. So that's it. So yeah, the first one's key of C, one, six. Second one is one, five, key of D minor. Third bar is key of E minor, one, five. And then fourth bar is the same as the second bar, right? Back to D minor, one, five. Make sense? <laughs> I think that's it off the top of my head. There might be another way to analyze that. I'll have to think about that. I'll have to see. It's the way I would think about it. They actually call these ones rhythm changes. I don't know why they call it rhythm changes, but it's changes is the main thing <laughs> where you're changing keys pretty quick. And so in order to solo over this, to have it make sense, you got to really know what you're doing. <laughs> it's a great exercise for cool chords, I think. So well worth uh, digging into if you're into it. If not, no worries at all. Next week, we'll be back with the acoustic. I'm not sure if it's an acoustic workout. I think it's an acoustic workout or a finger picking workshop. Not sure which one, but uh, we'll be back on the acoustic next week. Same time. Everybody, I super appreciate the questions. The engagement's always great. Uh, really uh, appreciate you guys spending your Friday or your Saturday if you're uh, down under or elsewhere. Saturday mornings. I super appreciate you uh, jumping on. It's awesome. So uh, take care, everybody. Have a great weekend. Have a great next week. And uh, we'll see you Friday. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. I appreciate the kind words. That's awesome. Take care, everybody. We'll see you. See you soon.